Chapter 21 They drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, and Yahusha sent two of his disciples. He said unto them, Go into the fortress which is opposite you, and immediately you will find a she-ass and her colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If a man should say anything to you, tell him the master has need of them, and immediately he will let them go. And this was to fulfill the word of the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, just and victorious is he, humble, and riding upon a she-ass, and upon a colt, the fowl of a she-ass. Then they went and did as Yahusha commanded them. They brought the she-ass and the colt, and Yahusha rode upon it, while the others placed their garments and clothes upon them. Then they made the ascent. Many of the crowds spread out their garments in the way, and others cut branches from the trees, and cast them before him and behind him, calling out, saying, Hosanna, Savior of the world, blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahuwah. Hosanna, our Savior. May you be glorified in heaven and on earth. It came to pass afterwards, when Yahusha entered Jerusalem, all the city quaked, saying, Who is this? The people said to one another, Yahusha the prophet from Nazareth, which is in Galilee. Yahusha entered the house of Yahuwah, and found there those who buy and sell. He overturned the tables of the money changers, and the seats of those who were selling doves. He said unto them, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a cave of violent men. Then the blind and lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. The chief sages and priests came to see the wonders which he did. The young boys were calling out in the temple, saying, Let the son of Elohim be praised. The sages mocked and said to him, Have you not heard what these are saying? He answered them and said, I heard them. Have you not read from the mouth of children and babes you have established strength? He left and went out to Bethany and spent the night there, and there he was explaining to them the kingdom of Elohim. It came to pass in the morning that he returned to the city hungry. He saw a fig tree near the road and drew near to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. He said to it, May fruit never come forth from you. Immediately the fig tree dried up. The disciples saw, were amazed, and said, How is it the fig tree dried up immediately? Yahusha answered and said to them, If you have faith without doubt, not only to the fig tree will you do thus, but should you say to this mountain that it should depart and go into the sea, it will be done. Everything which you shall ask in prayer while believing, you will receive. He went into the temple to teach, and there came to him the sages, the priests, and the rulers of the people, saying, By what power do you do this, and who gave you this strength? Yahusha answered them and said to them, I also will ask you a question, and if you tell me, I also will tell you by what power I do this. The baptism of John, whence was it, from heaven or from men? They grieved among themselves, saying, What will we say? If we say, From heaven, he will say to us, Why did you not believe him? If we say, From men, we fear the crowd, because all of them believed John was a prophet. So they said, We do not know. He said, Also, I will not tell you by what power I do this. In the evening, Yahusha said to his disciples, What is your opinion? A certain man had two sons. He approached one and said to him, Go, my son, today, to work in my vineyard. He said to him, I do not wish to. But afterward, he repented and went. He said to the other likewise, and he answered him, Here I am, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said to him, The first. Yahusha said to them, Truly I say to you, violent men and harlots will precede you into the kingdom of heaven, because John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But violent men and harlots believed him, and you saw it and did not turn to repentance. Also afterward, you did not repent to believe him. To the one who has ears to hear, let him hear in disgrace. At that time, Yahusha said to his disciples and to a company of the Jews, Hear now the parable of the sower. A certain honorable man planted a vineyard, 
walled it up on every side, built a tower in its midst, and also dug a vat in it, entrusted it to servants, and went on his way. It came to pass at the time of the gathering of the produce. He sent his servants to those who were working to receive his produce. But the workers took his servants, smote the first, killed the second, and the third they stoned with stones. Again, he sent many more servants than the first, and they did to them likewise. Finally, he sent them his son, saying, Perhaps they will honor my son. The workers saw his son and said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and we will inherit his estate. So they took him, cast him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the Adonai of the vineyard comes, what will he do to them? They answered him, saying, As for the wicked, he will destroy them in misery, and his vineyard he will give to the other workers who will immediately give to him the portion of his produce. Yahusha said to them, Have you not read the scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This was from Yahuwah. It is a marvel in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of heaven will be torn from you and given to a nation producing fruit. He who falls upon this stone will be cast down. He who falls upon it will be broken apart. The chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables and understood that he was speaking in regard to them. They sought to kill him, but they feared the crowds, to whom he was a prophet. Chapter 22 Yahusha answered and spoke to them again in the words of a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who made a wedding ceremony. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the wedding ceremony, but they did not wish to come. He again sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have prepared a feast. I have killed oxen and fowl, and all is ready. Come to the wedding ceremony. But they scorned and went away, some into the city and some to their businesses. Others took his servants, abused them, and killed them. The king heard this, was angry, sent those murderers away, and burned their house with fire. Then he said to his servants, The marriage ceremony is ready, but those who were invited were unworthy. Now go out into the roads, and all whom you find invite to the marriage ceremony. His servants went out into the ways and assembled all those who were found, good and bad. So the marriage ceremony was filled with those who were eating. The king entered to see those who were eating, and saw there a man who was not clothed in wedding garments. He said to him, My friend, how did you come in here without wedding garments? He was silent. The king said to his servants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast them to the nethermost and lowest hell. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Many are called, but few are chosen. Then the Pharisees came and took counsel to take him in speech. They sent to him some of their disciples with violent men from Herod, saying, Rabbi, we know that you are faithful. You faithfully study the way of Elohim. You fear nothing and are impartial. Tell us your opinion. Is it right to give tribute to Caesar or not? Yahusha recognized their deceit and said, Why do you entice me, hypocrites? Show me a tax coin. They brought a plain one to him. He said to them, Whose form is this and whose impression? They said, Caesar's. Then Yahusha said to them, Return to Caesar that which is Caesar's, and to Elohim that which is Elohim's. They heard and were amazed. They left him and went away. On that day, the Sadducees and those who deny the resurrection of the dead met him. They asked him, saying, Rabbi, Moses surely said to us, When brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, his brother should take his wife to raise up the seed of his brother. Behold, there were seven brothers among us. The first one took a wife, died without seed, and his brother married his wife. Likewise, the second and the third unto the seventh. After them, the woman died. Since she had already belonged to all of them, to which of the seven will she be a wife? Yahusha answered and said to them, You err and do not understand the writings or the power of Elohim. In the day of resurrection, men will not take women nor women men, but they will be like the angels of Elohim in heaven. Have you not read concerning the resurrection of the dead that Yahuwah spoke to you, saying, I, Yahuwah, 
and the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob? If so, he is not the Elohim of the dead, but the Elohim of the living. The crowds heard and were amazed at his wisdom. When the Pharisees saw that the Sadducees had no answer, they joined his servants. Then a sage asked him, tempting him, Rabbi, tell us, which is the greatest command in the Torah? He said to them, Thou shalt love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul and all your strength. This is the first. The second is like it. Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these two commandments, the whole law hangs and the prophets. The Pharisees assembled and Yahusha asked them, saying, What is your opinion concerning the Messiah? Whose son will he be? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it that David, by the Ruach HaKodesh, called him, saying, Adonai? As it is written, Yahuwah said to my Adonai, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies the footstool of your feet. If David called him Adonai, how is he his son? They were not able to answer him a word, and from then on, they feared to ask him anything. Chapter 23 Then Yahusha spoke to the people and to his disciples, saying, Upon the seat of Moses the Pharisees and the sages sit. Now all which they say to you, keep and do. But according to their ordinances and deeds, do not do, because they say and do not. They demand and set forth great burdens which the shoulders of men are not able to bear. But they themselves, even with their finger, are unwilling to move. All their actions they do for the sake of appearances. They wear expensive garments and large tassels, called fibliels. They love to recline first in the banquet halls, to be seated first at the synagogues, to prostrate themselves in the streets, and to be called rabbi. But as for you, do not desire to be called rabbi. One is your rabbi, and all of you are brothers. Call no man upon the earth father, one is your Father who is in heaven. Do not be called Rabbi, because one is your Rabbi, the Messiah. The greatest among you will serve you. He who exalts himself will be humbled. He who is humbled will be exalted. Woe to you Pharisees and sages, hypocrites, because you close up the kingdom of heaven before men. You yourselves do not enter, and those who wish to enter, you do not permit to enter. Woe to you Pharisees and sages, hypocrites, because you devour and divide the wealth of certain widows and lengthy exposition. For this, you will suffer a long punishment. You encompass sea and land to bind the heart of one man to your faith, and when he is bound, he is doubly worse than before. Woe to you, counsel the blind, who say that he who swears by the temple is not obligated, but he who vows by anything which is consecrated to the structure of the temple is obligated to pay. Mad and blind men, which is greater, the temple or that which is consecrated to the temple? And whoever swears by the altar is not obligated, but he who swears that he will make an offering is obligated to give it. Woe, blind men, which is more, the gift or the altar, the temple or the gift? He who swears by the altar swears by it and by everything which is in it. He who swears by the throne of Elohim swears by it and by the one who sits upon it. Woe to them, the sages and Pharisees, who tithe mint, dill, and pomegranate, but who commit robbery and leave undone that which is weightier, that is, the judgments of the Torah, which are kindness, truth, and faithfulness. These are commands worthy of doing. One should not forget them. Offspring of blind leaders, who are strict in the matter of the gnat and swallow the camel. Woe to you, Pharisees and sages, because you cleanse cups and platters on the outside, but inside them is full of wickedness and uncleanness. Hypocrite, cleanse first that which is inside, in order that that which is outside might be pure. Woe to you, sages and Pharisees, hypocrites, who are like whitened sepulchers, which appear on the outside to be beautiful to men, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and the filthy. Thus, you appear on the outside to be righteous to men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Woe to you, hypocrites, Pharisees, and sages, because you build the tombs of the prophets and glorify the monuments of the righteous. 
You say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have permitted them to put the prophets to death. In this you bear witness against yourselves, that you are the sons of those who killed the prophets. You behave according to the deeds of your fathers. Serpents, seed of vipers, how will you escape the judgment of Gehenna if you do not turn in repentance? At that time, Yahusha said to the crowds of Jews, Therefore, behold, I am sending you to prophets, sages, and scribes. Some of them you will kill, some of them you will afflict in your synagogues, and you will pursue them from city to city, in order to place upon you the blood of every righteous one which has been poured out upon the earth, from the blood of Abel the righteous unto the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you killed between the temple and the altar. Truly I say to you, that all these things will come upon this generation, and upon Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and removes those who are sent. How many times I wish to gather your children, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you would not. Therefore you will leave your house desolate. Truly I say to you, you will not see me henceforth, until you will say, Blessed is our Savior. Chapter 24 it came to pass, when Yahushua went out from the temple, as he was going, his disciples drew near to show him the buildings of the temple. He said, You see all these. Truly I say to you, that all will be destroyed, and there will not be left there one stone upon another. As he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, John, and Andrew asked him secretly, When will all these things be, and what will be the sign when all these matters will take place? Or when will they begin? And when will be the end of the world and your coming? Yahushua answered them, Beware, lest anyone should lead you astray, because many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead you astray. As for you, when you hear of wars and company of hosts, beware, lest you become foolish, because all of this will occur, but the end will not be yet. Nation will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great tumults, grievous famines, and earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginning of suffering. Then they will bind you over for tribulation and will kill you, and you will become a reproach to all the nations for my name. Then many will be perturbed, deal treacherously with each other, and be enraged among themselves. False prophets will arise and lead many astray. When wickedness multiplies, the love of many will grow faint. Whoever waits until the end will be saved. And this gospel, that is, Evangelii, will be preached in all the earth for a witness concerning me to all the nations, and then the end will come. This is the Antichrist, and this is the abomination which desolates, which was spoken of by Daniel as standing in the holy place. Let the one who reads understand. Then those who are in Judah, let them flee to the mountains. He who is upon the house, let him not come down to take anything out of his house. He who is in the field, let him not turn back to take his garment. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who nurse children in those days. Pray to Elohim that your flight will not be on the Sabbath day, because then there will be great distress, which has not been from the creation of the world until now, and as will not be. Except those days were few, no flesh would be saved. But for the sake of the chosen, those days will be few. At that time, if one should say to you, Behold, the Messiah is here or there, do not believe it, because false messiahs and false prophets will arise, and they will give signs and great wonders, so that if it can be, they will come to lead the chosen astray. Then if they should say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out, and behold, he is in the chambers, do not believe it. Behold, I tell you before it happens. Again, Yahushua said to his disciples, As the lightning comes from the east and is seen in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the body is, there will be gathered the vultures. At that time, after the tribulation of those days, the sun will grow dark, the moon will not give forth its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the host of heaven will be shaken. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and all the families of the earth will weep and will see the Son of Man on the clouds of heaven with a great host and with dreadful appearance. He will send his angels with a trumpet, 
and with a great shout to gather his chosen from the four winds of heaven, from one end of heaven until the other. From the fig tree learn the parable. When you see its branches and leaves sprouting, know that he is near to the gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things shall be done. Heaven and earth will pass away, but of that day or that time there is none who knows, not even the angels of heaven, but the Father only. Again, Yahushua said to his disciples, As in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the Son of Man. Just as before the flood, they were eating, drinking, being fruitful, and multiplying until the day when Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came upon them and destroyed them. So will it be the coming of the Son of Man. Then, if there shall be two plowing in a field, one righteous and the other evil, the one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at a mill, one will be taken and the other left. This is because the angels at the end of the world will remove the stumbling blocks from the world and will separate the good from the evil. Then Yahushua said to his disciples, Therefore, watch with me, because you do not know at what hour your Adonai is coming. This you know, if one knew at what hour the thief was coming, he would watch and not allow him to dig into his house. So you should be prepared, because you do not know at what hour the Son of Man is going to come. What do you think of the faithful and wise servant whose Adonai places him over his children to give them food in its time? Blessed is that servant whose Adonai finds him doing thus when he comes. Truly, I say to you, that he will place him over his children. But if that servant should be evil and should say in his heart, My Adonai is late in coming, and should begin to beat the servant of his Adonai, and should eat and drink with gluttons, his Adonai will come in a day for which he does not wait, and at a time which he does not know. He will divide him and place his portion with the hypocrites. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Chapter 25 Again, Yahushua said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth to meet a bridegroom and a bride. Five of them were lazy fools, and five of them were alert and wise. The five foolish brought their lamps, but they brought no oil with them. The wise brought oil in their vessels with their lamps. The bridegroom was late, and behold, all of them lingered and slept. It came to pass at midnight that, behold, a voice was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming, come to meet him. Then all those virgins came and trimmed their lamps. The foolish virgin said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps have gone out. The wise answered, saying, Go now to those who sell, and buy for yourselves, because there is not enough oil for us and you. We fear that it will be lacking for us. It came to pass when they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Those who were ready went with him in the marriage ceremony, and the gate was closed. Afterwards, the foolish came and called at the gate, saying, O Adonai, open for us. He answered them, Truly, I say to you, I do not know who you are. Be careful, therefore, because you do not know the day nor the hour when the bridegroom will come. Again, Yahushua told his disciples another example. The kingdom of heaven is like a man going on a far journey. He called his servants and dispersed to them his money. To one he gave five coins of gold, to the other he gave two coins of gold, and to the third one, to each according to what was suitable for him he gave. Then he went on his journey. The one who received five coins of gold went and gained five others. Likewise, the one who received two went, bought, sold, and gained five others. But he who received the one went, dug in the earth, and hid the money from his Adonai. After many days, the Adonai of those servants came and sought from them an accounting of the money. The one who received five coins of gold came near and said to him, My Adonai, you gave me five coins of gold, and behold, for you are five others which I have gained. His Adonai said to him, Truly, you are a good and faithful servant. Because you have been faithful in a little, I will appoint you over much. Enter into the joy of your Adonai. Also, the one who received two coins of gold drew near and said, My Adonai, you gave me two coins of gold. Here are two others which I have gained. His Adonai said to him, Truly, you are a good and faithful servant. 
Because you have been faithful in a little, I will appoint you over much. Enter into the joy of your Adonai. Then he who received the one drew near and said, My Adonai, I know that you are firm and hard, and that you reap what you did not sow, and gather what you did not scatter. So in fear of you, I went and hid your coin of gold, and behold, you have what is yours. His Adonai answered and said, Wicked and lazy servant, since you know that I reap what I did not sow, and gather what I did not scatter, therefore you should have given my wealth to my money changers, so that at my coming I would have received what is mine with profit. Therefore, take from him the coin of gold and give it to the one who gained five coins of gold. To the one who has it will be given, but to the one who does not have that which was intended for him will be taken from him. As for the lazy servant, cast him into the darkness of the lowest places. There shall be for him weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again, Yahushua said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his revelation with his angels, then he will sit upon the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them as the shepherd separates the sheep and the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then he will say to those on his right, Enter blessed of my Father, and inherit for yourselves the kingdom of heaven prepared for you from the creation of the world until now. Because I was hungry, and you gave me eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a wayfarer, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer, O our Adonai, when did we see you hungry and satisfied you, thirsty and gave you drink, naked and clothed you, sick and visited you, in prison and came to you? The king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, that every time you did it to one of the needy of these, my brothers, even the little ones like these, you did it to me. Also he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, and go into the eternal fire to the place prepared for you with Satan and his angels. Because I was hungry, and you did not give me to eat. I was thirsty, and you did not give me to drink. I was a wayfarer, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer and say to him, When did we see you, O our Adonai, hungry, thirsty, or a wayfarer, naked, sick, or in prison? and were not with you, serving you. He will answer them and say, I say to you, that whenever you did not do this to one of these needy, even the little ones like these, you did not do it to me. Then these will go into eternal abhorrence, but the righteous into eternal life. Chapter 26 It came to pass, when Yahushua finished speaking all these things, he said to his disciples, Do you not know that after two days will be the Passover, and the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of the Jews for the gallows. Then the rulers of the priests and the great ones of the people were gathered together in the court of the chief priest, whose name was Caiaphas. They took counsel together to seize Yahushua by craftiness and to kill him. But they said, It should not be at the feast, lest there be a tumult among the people. It came to pass, when Yahushua was in Sefer Hanania, in the house of Simon the leper, a woman drew near to him with a flask of costly ointment. She poured it upon his head while he was reclining at the table. But this waste was very displeasing to them. It would have been possible to have sold it for a great price and have given it to the poor. Yahusha, who knows everything in regard to any matter done, said to them, Are you making accusation against this woman? Truly, she has performed a good and wonderful deed toward me, because the poor will be with you always but I will not be with you always. Her placing this on my body refers to my burial. Truly, I say to you, everywhere this gospel, that is, evangel, is proclaimed in all the world, that which this one has done will be said in reference to my memory. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest. He said, What will you give me that I should deliver Yahusha over to you? They settled with him for thirty pieces of silver. From then on, he sought a context for delivering him over. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Yahusha, saying, 
Where shall we prepare for you to eat Passover? He said to them, Go into the city to a certain man, who will be a volunteer for the task, and say to him, Thus says the teacher, My time is near. With you I will observe the Passover with my disciples. It came to pass at the time of evening, he was sitting at table with his twelve disciples. As they were eating, he said to them, I say to you that one of you will inform against me. They were very sad, and spoke each one to him, saying, Adonai, is it I? He answered them, He who dips his hand with me in the dish will sell me. All of them were eating from one dish. Therefore, they did not recognize him, because if they had recognized him, they would have destroyed him. Yahusha said to them, Truly, the Son of Man goes as it is written concerning him. Woe to that man for whose sake the Son of Man is betrayed. Good would it be for that man not to have been born. Judas, who sold him, answered and said to him, Rabbi, am I this one? He said, You have spoken. They were eating, and Yahushua took bread, blessed, divided it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat, this is my body. He took the cup, gave praise to his father, gave it to them, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which will be poured out for many for the atonement of sins. I say to you, I will not drink henceforth from the fruit of this vine until that day when I drink it new with you in the kingdom of heaven. They returned and went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Yahusha said to his disciples, Come, all of you, be grieved because of me tonight, because it is written, Smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. After my resurrection from death, I will be revealed to you in Galilee. Peter answered and said to him, If all of them are grieved because of you, I will never be grieved. Yahusha said, Truly I say to you, this night before the cock crow, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, If it is arranged for me to die with you, I will not deny you. Likewise, all the disciples said to him, Then Yahusha came with them to the village of Geshomenim and said, Sit now until I go there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sad and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is grieved unto death. Support me and watch with me. He slowly went forward a little, fell on his face, prayed and said, My father, if it is possible, take this cup from me. Indeed, let it not be as I will, but according to your will. He came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, So you are unable to watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Because truly, the spirit is ready to go to its creator, but the flesh is weak and sick. He went again to pray, saying, If you are not able to remove this cup, except I should drink it, let it be done according to your will. Afterwards, he returned and found them sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. He left them and went to pray a third time according to the first words. Then Yahusha came to where the disciples were and said to them, Sleep and be at rest. Behold, the time has come near when the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of sinners. Arise, let us go, for behold, he who will betray him is near. While he was speaking, behold, Judas Iscariot, one of his twelve disciples, came. With him was a large crowd with swords and whips, sent from the chief priest and the princes of the people. He who betrayed him had given them a sign. The man whom I kiss is the one whom you are to arrest. Immediately he drew near to Yahusha and said to him, Greetings, Rabbi. Then he kissed him. Yahusha said to him, My friend, what have you done? They came, stretched out their hand against him, and arrested him. Behold, one who was with Yahusha stretched out his hand, drew his sword, struck one of the servants of the priest, and cut off his ear. Yahusha said to him, Return your sword to its sheath, for those who draw the sword will fall by the sword. Do you not understand that I can meet my enemies, and indeed there will be for me at once more than twelve legions of angels? But how will the scriptures be fulfilled? Because thus it is intended to be done. Afterwards, Yahusha said to the crowd, As if we were thieves, have you come to take me with swords and whips? Was I not with you every day in the temple teaching you, without you hindering me? Surely all this was done because the writings of the prophets 
were being fulfilled. Then all his disciples left him and fled. They led Yahusha to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest. Then all the scribes and Pharisees were gathered together. Peter was following him at a distance unto the house of the high priest. He entered the house and sat near the craftsmen until he should see the end. The chief priests and the Pharisees wished to find false witness against Yahusha in order to put him to death, but they did not find even one. Though they provided many false witnesses against Yahusha, finally two false witnesses came forward. They said, This one said, I have the power to destroy the temple of Elohim, and after three days to repair it. The high priest arose and said to him, Do you not answer anything against the testimony that these are bearing against you? But Yahusha answered, Not a word. The high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living Elohim that you tell us if you are the Messiah, the son of Elohim. Yahusha answered him, You say it, but again I say to you, you have yet to see the son of Elohim sitting at the right of the power of Elohim coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his garments and said, This one has cursed Elohim. What need do we have for other witnesses? Behold, all of you have heard how he cursed Elohim. What do you think can be done? They answered, He is guilty of death. Then they spit in his face and struck him on the back, and others slapped him in the face, saying, Tell us, Messiah, who struck you? Peter was standing at the entrance of the courtyard, and there came near to him a maid who said to him, Were you not standing with Yahusha, the Galilean? Peter lied to her before all and said to her, Woman, I do not know what you are saying. When he passed through the gate, another maid saw him and said to those who were standing there, This man was standing with Yahusha in Nazareth. Again, he denied Yahusha with an oath, saying that he did not know him. After a little while, those who were standing in the courtyard drew near to Peter and said to him, You are from this prophet's group. It is clear from your speech you are one of them. Then he began to deny and to swear that at no time had he known him. Immediately the cock crowed. Peter remembered what Yahusha had said to him, that before the crowing of the cock, he would deny him three times. Then he went outside and wept with bitterness of soul. Chapter 27 It came to pass in the morning, all the chief sages and elders took counsel against Yahusha that they should surely put him to death. They led him bound to the house of Pontius Pilate, who was commander. When Judas Iscariot saw that he had been judged, he began to turn in repentance. He returned the thirty dinars to the high priest and to the elders of the people. He said, I have sinned because I have shed innocent blood. But they said to him, What is that to us? You see to it. He threw the coins in the temple, went and took a rope, and hanged himself. When the chief priests received the coins, they said, It is not possible for us to place these coins in the temple, because they are the fruit of blood, since they were given for the blood of Yahusha. So they took counsel and gave them for a field of a certain potter of clay, that they might bury strangers there. Therefore, that field is called the tent of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled the word of Zechariah the prophet. And I said to them, If it is good in your eyes, multiply my wages, but if not, forbear. So they weighed for my wages thirty pieces of silver. Then Yahuwah said to me, Cast it unto the potter. This is from the man who forms clay, as Yahuwah commanded. Yahusha was standing before Pilate, who asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yahusha said, You say it. When Yahusha was harassed by the chief priests and elders of the people, in regard to some word which they spoke against him, he did not reply. Pilate said to him, Do you not see how much testimony there is against you? But Yahusha did not answer him a word, and Pilate was exceedingly amazed by this. On the day of the honored feast of Passover, it was their custom for the commander of the city to give to the people one of the prisoners whom they wished. Pilate had a prisoner who was almost crazy. His name was Barabbas. Taken in a case of murder, he had placed him in the dungeon. When they were gathered together, Pilate said to them, Which of these do you wish that I should release, Barabbas or Yahusha, who is called Messiah? This was because Pilate knew that due to hatred without cause, he had been taken. While he was sitting upon the throne, his wife sent to him a messenger, saying, I implore you that in no matter should you speak a word against this righteous man, 
because in this night I have suffered many things in a vision because of him. The chief priests and the elders of the law assembled the people, that they might ask for Barabbas, and that Yahushua might die. Pilate answered them, Which of them do you wish that we should release? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, If so, what shall I do with Yahushua, who is called Messiah? All of them answered that he should be hung. Pilate said to them, What evil has he done? Then they vigorously cried out, Let them hang him, let them hang him, let them hang him. Pilate, when he saw that he had no power of resistance and was unable to make any peace with them before a great dispute among the people might arise because of this, took water and washed his hands before the people and said, I am innocent of the blood. Be careful what you do. All the people answered and said, His blood will be upon us and upon our seed. Then he released Barabbas to them and delivered to them Yahushua for beating and affliction that they might hang him. Then the horsemen of the court took Yahushua under guard and came to gather before a great company of many people. They clothed Yahushua with silk garments and covered him with a greenish silk robe. They made a crown of thorns and placed it on his head and set a reed in his right hand and were bowing down mocking him, saying, Peace be upon you, King of the Jews. They spit in his face and took the reed and struck his head. When they had mocked him much, they stripped the robe from him, dressed him in his own clothes, and gave orders to hang him. As they were going out from the city, they met a man whose name was Simon the Canaanite. They compelled him to carry the gallows, that is, the cross. They came to a place called Gogolta, that is, Mount Calvary, and gave him wine mixed with gall. But when he began to drink it, he perceived what it was and would not drink it. When they placed him on the gallows, they divided his garments by lot. Afterward, they set for him over his head a writing which said, This is Yahushua of Nazareth, the king of Israel. Then two thieves were hung with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who were passing by mocked him and shook their heads, saying, See how you would lay waste the temple of Elohim and in yet three days build it. Save yourself, if you are the son of Elohim, come down from the gallows. The chief priests and the elders of the people mocked him, saying, Others he saved, himself he could not save. If he is the king of Israel, let him come down from the tree, and we will believe. Since he trusted in Elohim, let him save him now if he wishes, because he said he is the son of Elohim. The thieves who were hung with him said to him these very same words. At the sixth hour, darkness came in all the world, and it remained until the ninth hour. Yahushua cried in a loud voice, saying, In the holy language, My Elohim, my Elohim, why have you forsaken me? One of those standing there said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately he took spongy bread, filled it with vinegar, and gave it to him to drink. Others were saying, We will see if Elijah will come down and deliver him. Yahushua cried another time in a loud voice, and sent his Ruach to his father. Immediately, the curtain of the temple was torn into two pieces. From the top downwards, the earth shook and the rocks were broken. The graves were opened and many of those asleep in the dust arose. They came out of their graves and after this, they entered the holy city and were revealed to many. The captain of the hundred and those standing with him, watching Yahusha, saw the earthquake and the things which were done and were very afraid, saying, Truly? This was the son of Elohim. Many women were standing there at a distance from among those who served Yahushua from Galilee until that time. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. At evening time, a rich man from Karnasaya came. His name was Joseph, and he was a disciple of Yahushua. He came to Pilate and asked him for the body of Yahushua. Pilate commanded that they should give it to him. Joseph took it and wrapped it in a very fine silk garment. He placed them in his own tomb, which had been freshly hewn from stone, and placed a large stone over the entrance of the tomb. On the morrow of the Passover, the chief priests and the Pharisees came to Pilate. They said to him, Sir, we remember that this liar said, while still alive, that at the end of three days he would arise and come to life. Therefore, command his tomb to be guarded until the third day since perhaps one of his disciples might come and steal him. 
Afterwards, they might say to the people that he arose from death. If they should do this, the last perversion will be greater than the first. Pilate said to them, Search out guards and guard it as well as you can. So they completed the structure of the tomb, sealed it, and placed the guard there. Chapter 28 On the first day of the week, early in the morning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Then the earth shook because the angel of Yahuwah descended from heaven to the tomb, overturned the stone, and stood still. His appearance was like the sun, and his garments like snow. From the fear of him, the guards were dismayed and stood like dead men. The angel answered and said to the woman, Do not fear, for I know that you seek Yahusha who was hung. He is not here, for he is already alive, as he said. Come, therefore, and see the place where the Lord arose. Then go immediately and tell his disciples that the Lord has already arisen there. He will be before you, and there you will see him as he told you. The women went out of the tomb with fear, because they had seen the angel, but with great joy, because the Lord had come back to life. They ran to tell his disciples. As they were going, Yahusha passed before them, saying, May the name deliver you. They came near to him, bowed down to him, and worshipped him. Then Yahusha said to them, Do not be afraid. Tell my brothers that they should go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, some of the guards entered the city and declared to the chief priest all that had happened. They came together for counsel with the elders of the people. Then they gave much money to the horsemen and said to them, Say that his disciples came by night and stole him while you were sleeping. If this should come to the ears of Pilate, we will tell him that he should leave you alone. They took the money and said thus as they instructed them, This is the word held in secret among the Jews until this day. After this, when his twelve disciples came to Galilee, he appeared to them in the mountain where they had prayed. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But there were some of them who doubted him. Yahushua drew near to them and said to them, To me has been given all power in heaven and earth. Go and teach them to carry out all the things which I have commanded you forever.